Born in 1995, Gary Ringrose was only five when the Five Nations changed to the Six Nations. Ahead of this year's championship, I caught up with a young Dubliner to find out a little more about Ireland's up-and-coming star. You're very busy. I mean, you're doing a full-time and a very demanding degree course. Yeah, I'm studying um, business and law in UCD at the moment, so right. I actually have a the kind of the exam this evening that I'll be shooting off to All right. so do a last bit of cram before <laughs> but uh, and is it difficult then combining the, the two uh, well it's I think Lancer are brilliant they'd always encourage that you do okay. something outside of for the club itself of yeah just and for your own self yeah. keep you sane as well yeah. um, uh, and then working with UCD as well they're brilliant in how they facilitate what I can do and can't do and excellent assignment extensions and sitting right. an exam on a different day still have to Sit the same exams as everyone else, but they uh, they yeah. facilitate and are really supportive of the rugby. Oh, you, you talk about focus, you talk about preparing, um, but you still have to study, train, play, and then you have that added little bit of pressure of looking style-wise like a certain former <laughs> number 13. And you've been compared to him quite a lot in terms of style, gait and everything. Is that an added pressure? Because, I mean, he was arguably the greatest rugby player we've had in modern times. Yeah, well, there's there's no doubting that. No pressure, um, like <laughs> No, um, but I think, look, I don't think there'll ever be another Brian O'Driscoll, yeah. let's be honest, and I'm not going to start putting myself under pressure to try and do what he did or achieve right. half of what he has. So, um, you know, what I do is just focus on you know, the senior players close to me in the club um, and, and with the country, and then... I mean, friends and family that keep yeah. me grounded as well, so I'm not really stray too right, far okay. out of that and, and purely focus on that, yeah. yeah. What are you doing downtime? I mean, I know you have an interest in cars, for instance. Yeah, well, I'm lucky to have the Audi car there, so I uh, actually was pretty late to get my driver's license. I right. got a bit of stick in the club as well, and for that, so I passed my test last year and then managed to well done. join on as a, an so Audi for ambassador. for are watching, he passed his test. <laughs> well done, it was brilliant. And you yeah, got the so ambassador's gig with them? Yeah, no, they've been brilliant. and yeah. and. Uh, they took a bit of chance of me and right. would have been talking to them before I probably had 10 caps for Lancer. Um, right. So I love working with them and appreciate Stunning any car. car I can get. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm yeah. over the moon. Um, yeah, it's excellent. a lot better than the car oh, I was right. driving in before. before sure. Wear it well, as the expression goes, and, yeah, and, and yeah. enjoy every moment of it, of course, as well. Um, you're off that production line that I don't know whether BlackRock like, referred to as that, but when you look at the number of Irish internationals that come out of BlackRock, I'm sure they're very proud. <laughs> and uh, But you just see, the school just keeps churning out internationals of a high calibre. Yeah, well, it's, I think it's a combination of the facilities they have there as well as the, the coaches and networking they have around that. And I was lucky to deal with loads of coaches over the years and it was constantly about trying to be better. And, and with 200 per year as well of, I'm not exactly the numbers who amount to play yeah. rugby uh, in each year, there's a lot of competition as well. So that usually brings the best out in you. Um, I think throughout school, I learned a few tough lessons and getting dropped and to the lower teams yeah. and then having to work the way back up. So I was pretty lucky in my in my final year was when it uh, seemed to click. Um, obviously, you were in Chicago for that fantastic defeat of, 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 of the All Blacks and you must have been chomping at the bit to get on, but yeah. it, it, it didn't happen, sadly. But you had a magnificent try a couple of weeks later at home. Yeah, well, it was, I think, that autumn series. I hadn't really expected to be involved yeah, yeah. In, the, in the way I was. and even getting called, it was the first Irish squad I'd been called into, so I was a little bit nervous going in. And then when it came to the Chicago, fixture in Chicago against the All Blacks, um, there was one or two injuries. And then Keith Earls picked up a niggle in training and then I managed to find myself on the bench. Yeah, um, yeah. Which I didn't see coming at all. And then that week itself was a massive learning curve for me, what it takes wow. at that level. And I remember for Chicago anyway, before the last training session, before we got a flight out to to Chicago with our lingus there, we, uh, Joe told me before training, so right. I had to wait till I was finished to <laughs> run in and get my phone and, and tell and my parents books. to book flights. So, oh, fantastic. And they, uh, they managed to go over and that's, it didn't really tarnish it too much that I wasn't, didn't get on. Um, you know, I enjoyed every second right. of the occasion, it was a massive learning curve and I know after the game, uh, Joe told me that uh, I was going to be making my debut then against Canada the following, following week. week yeah. so, I was pretty excited and come right. to find that out anyway, so yeah. uh, it didn't really tarnish it at all. Not at all, it was fantastic. Uh, the try against Australia? Yeah. Do you remember much about it? Yeah, again, it was, it was the All Blacks the week before yeah, um, yeah. in the Aviva, which didn't work out the way we'd hoped. Yeah. Um, we got close, but it wasn't, fell short, weren't good enough. Um, and there was a couple of injuries in that game, and then found out I selected it at first centre against Australia, so 
I was just focusing all week and trying to make sure I got my role right and, and slotted into the team as, as best I could. And then the scoring a try and was a bit of a bonus. It was all right. about just getting the win in the end, which, yeah. which we, we did well. I think it was a bit of a makeshift backline by the end of the game. There's a couple of knock, bumps and bruises, but um, yeah, it was one of the best experiences of my rugby career. And, and like, so when you compare and contrast then, watching it at home on television a couple of years ago, now like you're playing with some of the guys, who were the heroes maybe when you were watching Six Nations when you were a bit younger before you got to this stage? Who, you know, what was the thrill about going to the games and watching yeah. them? Yeah, well, it's a lot of memories to pick from. Um, I mean, as I got older, I, playing scrum half in, in secondary school, yeah. I would have looked at Connor Murray and right, tried to yeah. copy some of the stuff he did. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously seeing Johnny and likes of Rob Kearney, Fergus McFadden, all these guys that I'm lucky enough to work with um, every day in Leinster with. So. Uh, yeah, I looked up to a lot of them because I, my final year or final couple of years in schools, I played a loads of different positions. So right. I never really idolised one individual. Yeah, um, yeah. Just try and copy them all. Really. Well, right, no, well done. That's absolutely brilliant. I mean, you have this fantastic start to what will hopefully be a long and wonderful career, and we'd like to wish you the very best. Thank you. Look with that, and we'd thanks also like much. to say thanks very much for joining us, Gary. Oh, well, thank you. Pleasure. Thanks for having thanks me. Indeed. Thanks, William.